everything. Mm -hmm. Not a worry. Just tell me. Get it out of you. Right. But it was, when I tell you, I was so happy. Like, it was such a good day. I kid you not. The weather was beautiful outside. I'm the one that had him go inside so we can do puzzles and painting and listen to music or whatever else See? he wants to do. So then he starts doing whatever it is we're doing mm -hmm. together in the living room and then starts talking because I think he gets comfortable with, okay, you know what, we're here. It is a good day. Let me go ahead and explain myself so I know. Nobody else knows, but I know. Nobody knew George better than I did. I say that I knew George better than himself. And I tried in every way, shape, and form. Ask everyone. I helped him. I took care of him. I miss him a lot, and I didn't even sleep last night. I miss him a lot. <laughs> I mean, is there any chance it got to be too much for you and you couldn't handle taking care of him? And I never stopped. Trying to I never stopped. Him. That's what I'm here for. I never stopped. I'm here now because I'm still trying to help him. Yeah, we just don't. I mean, it's unexplainable. No. No, because she's sitting there saying how awful he is how wonderful she is. He's an alcoholic, but she is not. She's controlling everything about him. And she thinks that's help. She has set up an obligation. She has, she feels owed. She feels entitled. And now she's trying to make this sound like her coming in to speak to police is somehow a favor to this man whose death she caused. Of all, how he got these injuries and... I have no idea. You were the only one with him. A hundred percent right hand to God. I have no idea how he got them. Nobody touched anybody. Nobody touched anybody so that it's... <laughs> It's not like she needed to defend herself in the moment, right? And the as soon as somebody says, I swear to God, my alarm go bells go off. She can't rely on the actual facts. So, you know, she has to invoke God and emphasis and all of that. Nobody touched anybody. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that you take, uh, you would take photos, videos, just kind of like a proof and just in general. Yeah, I started documenting at one point, but that was that was way before I think the last time that he got arrested where he was flying off the deep end. <clears throat> okay. But then I had him bailed out. I got him out of jail. Right. But because he See? had violated the pretrial diversion, they this time it's probation, so you don't have a choice in it. You have to go to see your probation officer. You have to go to these classes. It's court ordered. Mm -hmm. Where it took him a while to get used to it and understand, they're not messing around. I even went down and met his uh, probation officer, which I say, I, she, she's wonderful. That's one of my questions that you need to talk to you about. Hugged me and said how much she knows that I take care of him. She called me personally one time when George was at work, when he was working. 42 minute phone call. She and I just saying how grateful she is that George has me. And she knows how hard I'm working to help him, just as she is and just as... 42 minutes of a probation officer telling Sarah how great it is that what she's doing? Oh, come on. I believe that a probation officer would talk to a victim. I believe that a probation officer would validate and encourage and all of that. What people may not have known at the time is that Sarah was also controlling and was also abusive. And abuse doesn't have to, power and control and abuse of power doesn't have to rise to the level of a physical altercation or rise to the level of a criminal offense for it to be abusive, for it to be harmful, and for it to be unsafe. 
I guess nobody saw that she needed intervention too. It's too bad. As the class as well. So once he started actually going on a regular basis to the probation officer and then to his substance abuse class and his, I don't know what BIP stands for, Matters Intervention Program, mm -hmm. and actually listening to what it is everyone had to say, he changed. Like I could, I could see a change in him where before lashing out, he would think about it and would always come home and show me his papers and we would look over his papers together where it's like, wow, you actually are learning this in class? And some of the stuff that they would show them, like videos, he would come home and be like, Sarah, I'm so sorry for what I've done to you because for a video that he watches to make him feel that way where it's like, oh man, I have done her wrong. But he's changed. He changed. And that's why you're still with him, even though he's done all these things to you. And when I tell you I love him, I love him. Even when you have, when you love somebody, you have limits. Everybody tells me that. All my neighbors don't tell me that. Mm -hmm. The office, property manager. <laughs> At some point, somebody gets enough. That, what you're seeing there, that's real. That's tough. I mean, she was stuck. If you've never been in a situation like that, it's really easy to judge and tough to understand. People really do get stuck like that. Uh, psychologically stuck where they feel that they love the person and, and they're hopeful and they they struggle to figure out what to, what to do and they feel that nobody understands and often people don't understand and they do criticize or when they point when other people point out look th this isn't healthy it's really hard for the the person in the situation to see that accept it then they have to, to do something to defend themselves. I would just flee. And I don't know if you um, would like to see on my phone, or I think, it's, I think it's actually on a laptop. I actually, because, and you have to understand too, I have, like, prior to classes in PO, kicked him out how many times? I had him arrested how many times? But you also went down and bailed him out. I know. The next day. What's I on, know. What's on your laptop? Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, previously, mm -hmm. I actually looked up how to file a restraining order. Okay. So because I would take him out, his parents, because of them constantly having to take him back in, his bags of clothes, all his stuff. The one time, the last time, the father came out and irate and just not even, I, th I don't even know if he knew Lucas was in the car. Just opened the back of my car and just started throwing all his crap in. Just throwing it, like throwing it. Like the car would jostle. He was throwing all his stuff. At that point, because I continually did it, not continually, I think I maybe did it three times, and he has nowhere else to go, they got fed up and said, nope, either you're staying there or you're staying here. But if you're staying here at their place, it's permanent. You're not going back over there anymore. So what happens is he pursues me. So... I don't know if you all know where Katie Way Trail is. Okay, so we, it's literally right. So she's taking him and his stuff because his parents have had enough of him back ping-ponging back and forth and not being stable. And, you know, probably they're probably not wanting to enable him. They are probably saying, look, buddy, take some responsibility. And so, you know, one second here, they're throwing all his stuff in her car. So he's going with her. But in the next second, he's pursuing her. So what, what happened in between? And when she says, I looked up a restraining order, she's, des she's describing going to pick him and his clothes up at his family's house. So who, who was the restraining order against? I don't know if this is a redirect or if she's kind of scrambling for 
an explanation here. Right there from our apartment. Mm -hmm. Would ride his bike to work, but before he would leave extra early and come up to the wall, stand on top of his bike and poke his head over because he would know that I would be outside having my morning cigarette and cup of coffee. Where, and I would also know too what time he would get off of work, where I would know, come getting off of work, he's gonna do the same thing. So it's not like I ever got like a break from him, where I told you all yesterday, or whenever it was. I started to feel that it If your ex is coming around and you don't, you don't like that, uh, maybe you don't wanna call the police or, or do something that you don't wanna ratchet up to that level. And you know he's coming, say, at 3 o'clock when he gets off work, he's going to ride by. You know, if you don't want to see him and you don't want him to see you, you know that's not the time to go sit outside where he's going to be and have your smoke. Now, victims are allowed to do whatever they want. It, it shouldn't be that they have to avoid a stalker and I'm not saying that's what he was doing it sounds like she didn't tell him not to so you know he's not ignoring a no necessarily we don't know all the details but if she didn't want to see him and didn't want anything to do with him it sounds like she never said that it sounds like she was sitting out having a smoke waiting for him to come by and he pers he pursued her but she loves them and she wants them to pursue her. So I'm not, not sure why she's, why she's saying this. I think it's, you know, about making all the responsibility his. Oh, and she's saying, you know, I never got a break from him. Well, she, she didn't. So far, we're not hearing that she asked for a break from him. It was too much togetherness. And when you have too much togetherness, friction happens. So I'm going to go ride my bike. I'm going to go upstairs and read a book. But what he, every, what does he say? Every waking moment, he wants to be with me. So, and mind you, our townhome is either upstairs or downstairs. So it's like, if you would like to sit downstairs and watch a movie or play on the laptop, look up some jobs, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to be upstairs maybe watching one of my shows or maybe reading a book. So, and then when that would happen, we really needed that. So what's for dinner? And then we would cook together and eat dinner and then crawl in the bed and watch a movie. Are you talking about this is like recent? I don't you kind of like lost me. Like when, what are you it talking about? It was a while, about? like a little while ago. <clears throat> but but now you're talking about, now you're talking about tension building up and that you need space. So... Have you been feeling that way lately, or? No. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, my thing is, too, so you all know. Oh, I, I hate that you can't talk to her, but um, B, his ex-wife, when I say a monster, she's a monster. Like, it does, she withholds her, their children from speaking to him. So he gets upset about that, and then she, like, completely berates him about money, about the father that he is. The detectives keep wanting to talk about the night in question, the night that the victim died. And she keeps going back. <clears throat> His father did this and the ex is a monster. At the same time, now that would make sense if all of these things, you know, were weighing on him and came into play all these stresses, his job, how his boss was awful, um, how his, his father was the way he was, why, you know, his drinking, his crazy ex. If all of those things sort of, you know, bore down on him and culminated into this, this horrible night where he couldn't take it anymore and he exploded and she needed to deal with that, then, you know, all of that would be relevant to this night. But she she's actually not alleging that. She keeps saying, no, everything was good. He changed. He, you know, 
we were having a great time. Everything was good. There was no problem. So what is all this other stuff that, what is she doing here? It's almost like a diffuse way of, you know, putting responsibility just out there um, and not really dealing with what happened. What he did to her, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter. I mean, mind you, this has not like been recent, but which is why he didn't even bother calling anymore because he knows that he's, she's going to answer and he's going to have to talk to her, so therefore he can't talk to his daughter. The other time he talked to her, made, made her talk to Cookie. That's on my cell phone too, so you can see it. Okay. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. What does she have to do, though, with anything about what happened Sunday and into Monday? Like, No, I'm just saying, like, previously, okay. why the incidents, what happened is she plays a big part in it. Okay. On her yeah. job yeah. and money and... She's actually saying, oh, this ex, who he doesn't really talk to anymore, she was the problem. She was why he got angry and, and blew up before, but now... He doesn't really talk to her anymore. So there's no blow up. Okay. Sunday, I, <coughs> when I tell you this, I have no idea. I have no idea. Is there anybody else at the house? No, nope, it's just me and him. Um, since talking yesterday, do you remember any like time timelines better? Like what time? Uh, you guys were playing. What time you he was zipped up in the luggage? What time you I went told upstairs? You, we started because we had we cleaned the house a little bit, did some laundry. You started the activities around four, you said. Yes, around mm -hmm. four, four thirty ish, and then you just said that it was dark when you were playing hide and seek, and I'm just curious yeah. if you remember. But when we were outside, that's where we would start mm -hmm. and talk about things, and then eventually I was the one that had him come inside, <laughs> so we could. About what time do you remember what time that was? She said when we were outside, th that's where we would start. Not that's where we started. She's not telling the truth here. She's not telling the truth about the night in question. Hmm. Well, this is what she's asking. Mm. And she said you went up you went up to bed around midnight. Midnight. -ish. Fell asleep around twelve thirty ish. But those are the only times I have. So I have four and I have midnight. So there's a big gap. So I'm just curious, like, if you recall when you went upstairs to hide in the shower or... Like when we started to play, hide mm -hmm. and seek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we went inside probably about, if I had to guess, we weren't, we weren't out there too long. Maybe about six-ish. Then you're talking about from hanging out outside and like, mm -hmm. okay. Well, we have two beach chairs that are out there. And right. Just enjoy the weather. Gotcha. Plus, it started to get dark and gnats and mosquitoes. Yeah. So, let's go inside. I don't want to be out here anymore. Okay. All right, let's go. So we're doing whatever. We did it for a while because that puzzle. I don't know if, if they took it or they saw it. Um, worked on. We do whatever. Whatever. A puzzle again. Finished it. Started to paint. Well, started listening to music for a little bit. Started to paint. Uh, can we turn the music off? No problem. Started to talk, paint, whatever. Maybe. Gosh, that puzzle. We worked on that for probably a good hour and a half. So, 8 o'clock ish? Is when you went to hide upstairs originally? No, that's when we were like painting. So then it's like, okay, well, I, we can't, I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just, ugh, come on. Ugh, come on. Somebody's frustrated. So, somebody wants to do something and isn't getting their way. She just told us that. Okay, we know. Okay, take off. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And then you went upstairs and then he didn't come up and you came down. No, that's when we were like painting. So then it's like, okay, well, I, we can't, I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just, ugh, come on. Okay, you want to play hide and seek? What he does is, okay, tag, you're it. Well, so it's like, okay, we know. Okay, take off. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And then you went upstairs and then he didn't come up and you came down. And the suitcase was there originally because you guys were planning to do donations. And so it was already suitcase. there. 
Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. So That's it was just kind of like that prop was there and it was there yes. and it was in play because. Why do you say it like that though? I would <coughs> never do that. You would never zip him up in a suitcase? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, we were playing. No, I know, that but, time, I'm just, but I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm talking about hide and seek, which is a game. So, the suitcase originally <laughs> is in our closet, buried all the way. All right, that male detective made a good catch there. She every time she's defending herself, she gets very emphatic. No, yes, we were just playing, right? So he, he caught that change in her tone of voice so he he asked her why you say it like that so she knows she knows what she did and she's saying i would never do that except she did way to the back if you i don't i know the csi people saw our closet our closet needs to be cleaned out really bad my son's clothes need to be cleaned out really bad because they don't fit him anymore and i'm tired of looking at them so he took it upon himself, including that suitcase, to take it downstairs so we can get all of our clothes, our donations and everything, and just leave the whole thing by the clothing and shoe thing at my son's school. No, we're just, I'm just asking, out of the, in the past, like, have, have you ever zipped him up in anything, jokingly or not, but obviously no. I understand, you know, you're claiming that Sunday it was a joking matter, you were laughing, yes. he was laughing. But what I'm just asking is in the past, like, is it something Absolutely that you guys not. normally do? Absolutely not. <clears throat> okay. Um, we were actually this last game, right? They're actually doing a good job. The, the detectives are subtly letting her talk and they're getting her locked into a story, right? So sometimes an accused will just lie their face off. But you know, you've you've got this on record, so it's easy to impeach them later, or they feel like they have to stick then with that story. Um, so they're they're actually getting her locked in into a story. Have you ever done this before? Was he laughing? Issues about, you know, questions about the timeline, which she is still not clear on. Questions about drinking repeated opportunities for her to say yeah you know what he did get belligerent he did get angry and i didn't know what to do none of that has come up even though there's an opportunity she's saying quite the opposite and she's painting herself into a corner and i don't think she realizes that running out of places to hide because we have a town home where it's upstairs or downstairs so right. Um, okay, so do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover, anything, any t photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. <coughs> no? I um, think I took a picture of a dog. Okay. But your phone is password protected, you have the password, mm -hmm. he has the facial recognition, so it's not like someone else could be on your phone. No, I have both very good uh she's making sure that the accused can't later say oh somebody else must have done that and and put that video on my phone or or they they made up a video and put it there she can't say that it's it's password protective and protected in facial recognition and so you know, if there's something on that phone, it's going to be hard to explain if she didn't do it. But you have the face and the password. Yes. Yeah, but he only has the face, correct? No. To be able to get onto your phone, you told me that he looks at the phone. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought you were asking if I did. Yes, it's me. Okay. Does he have access to your phone? Because you said it's yeah. your phone. Okay, how does he have access? Sarah, can I buy your phone? Yeah, it's right there on the kitchen counter. Okay, oh, but how does he get it. into it? Because it's password protected. He'll, he'll come and get it to me and I'll just do the face thing. Where sometimes too, like he, <coughs> look, he'll joke with me and say, "Okay, I need to borrow your phone." And he'll hold it while I'm cooking or doing something, 
do the facial recognition. Okay, so he doesn't know the password and he doesn't have the facial recognition. No. But he is the only other person that would use your phone, I'm yes. assuming, other than... Well, things. Lucas. Right. But Lucas wasn't there Sunday. Right. And, right. Um, so, to your recollection, no videos on Sunday? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, I like, I guess, <coughs> if I, I maybe took a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs and George and have them dancing, but I mean, or the, it's just Tess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found, um, and it was from your phone. Does, does Sarah not know that they'll look at her phone? I mean, why, why, why deny something that's there unless you, unless you've deleted it and think that they can't find it? They can. It's odd. Hmm. Or maybe if she, she, maybe she thinks if she says there's nothing on it of interest that they won't look. I wonder what that's about there. What she's thinking. Or if she actually forgot, I find that hard to believe, though. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. Yeah. For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Shut it down. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, guys, it's time for me to go and watch the suitcase video. I don't know whether or not I will rebroadcast that. There would have to be significant value that outweighs the harm for me to republish that video so i'm gonna go look at that i think i probably think this is a good time to end this portion of the interrogation thank you for watching